Hello, I've got your energy stories for this, the third week of June, 2022. Last week, Swedish energy company Vattenfall said some wind turbines at a new 1.5 gigawatt offshore facility will use Siemens Gamesa's recyclable wind blades. That's important because today's composite material blades are hard to recycle and there will be many to dispose of in the years to come. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory estimates as many as 12 billion metric tons by 2050. Best to avoid a problem in the making. In last week's segment, I forgot to mention that Hertz had begun taking deliveries of EVs from Polestar in early June. This adds to the fleet of Teslas that Hertz already rents out in 14 states and D.C. Last year, Hertz announced it would purchase 100,000 Teslas. So what's the big deal on the Polestars and why raise the story now? Well, because of the significance of adding a second model to the fleet. The $56 billion rental car industry buys roughly 10% of all U.S. passenger vehicles. And Hertz's SVP of operations indicated he's confident that Hertz will have about 30% of their fleet be represented by EVs by 2024. So yeah, it's a big deal. Staying with EVs, Charin, which is a consortium of charging companies and automobile OEMs, has demonstrated its megawatt charging system for the first time last week with the goal of creating a common future charging standard for heavy commercial vehicles. The prototype design of the plug will enable charging capacities of up to 3.75 megawatts. Seriously? One truck's instantaneous draw would equal that of about 10 decent-sized grocery stores. The first pilots for the heavy trucks and buses are planned for 2023 with commercial rollout in the following year. Sticking with EV charging, Solantis demonstrated a Fiat 500 electric vehicle that can travel at, quote, typical highway speeds without using energy from its battery and potentially restoring charges at slower speeds if it's on a wireless charging highway. The F500 was on a test track with a wireless inductive charging system using tech from Israel's Electrion, who's already electrified a one-mile stretch in Sweden and is working on another road in Michigan. This wireless space is worth watching. Oops, Ford is telling dealers to temporarily stop selling its electric Mustang Mach-E owing to a potential safety defect that could cause the vehicles to either not start or immediately lose propulsion power while in motion. This potentially affects 49,000 vehicles out of roughly 100,000 built in Mexico between May of 2020 and May of this year. Well, NextEra announced on an investor presentation last week that it will cut all of its direct and indirect carbon emissions by 2045. It plans to expand Florida power and light solar capacity to 90,000 megawatts and boost its energy storage capability to 50,000 megawatts, all without increasing customer bills. Outside the Sunshine State, NextEra sees a big role in the estimated $4 trillion investments needed to decarbonize the U.S. economy by 2050 with up to 7,000 gigawatts of renewables and storage. The company is also committing to hydrogen and plans to convert 16,000 megawatts of existing gas-fired plants over to hydrogen in the years to come. Well, New Hampshire utility Liberty Utilities proposes to raise its rates from 11.1 cents per kilowatt hour, the six-month current rate, uh, to 22.23 cents starting in July and going through December. Gas is the culprit. Prices doubled this year with the war in Ukraine and LNG exports exerting significant pressure. This announcement from Liberties is a harbinger of many rate increases across the country in the months to come. So get ready. It's going to be an ugly fall and maybe even a worse winter. And that discomfort isn't just being felt here. It appears that markets work except when they don't. And down under in Australia, the energy market operator, the AMO, suspended the national electricity market last week. Rather than markets setting wholesale prices, the AMO stepped in setting fixed prices and designating which power plants should generate energy and when. The conflict in Europe has driven coal and natural gas prices sharply upward at the same time some coal units were out for maintenance and others were down with outages. So AMO eventually decided to direct certain power stations to run and they set prices at the average of the past 28 days for each hour. If the costs exceed the revenues, owners can then apply for a true up. This morning, Tuesday, June 21st, news broke that the market may resume as early as Thursday. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.